Good morning and welcome to our service of worship this morning for Caton Baptist Church. Uh, we welcome you in to join with us and share with us as we uh, join together in worship this morning. A short reading for us to start with from 1 Peter chapter 5 and starting at verse 5. I'll start halfway through the verse. It says, Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that, you, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. To him be the dominion for ever and ever. Amen. We're thinking about worry this morning in our message. We are still in the Sermon on the Mount and we are reminded that we do not need to worry. That passage reminds us to cast all our anxieties on him. Cast all our cares on him because he cares for you. Let's pray as we begin our service this morning. Father God, we thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you that whoever we are, wherever we are, we can come before your throne, we can come into your presence to speak to the very creator of the universe. Lord, we would ask that as we share together this morning, as we come together and share on Zoom afterwards, Lord, may our time of fellowship be a time of encouragement for each other. But above all, Lord, may our worship of you be true. May our worship be acceptable, coming from pure hearts. Lord, we long to love you and to serve you. We long to be transformed into the image of Christ. Father God, as we worship together, our hearts long to meet in person once more. Lord, help us to know when is the right time to do the right things, to reopen church, to meet together. Lord, give us your wisdom in all the decisions that we need to take. Father God, be with us, each one this morning. We pray for those who are alone, those who are uh, struggling. Lord, we ask that at this time, they would know your presence with, they would know your peace, that each of us would cast our cares upon you, because you care for us. So Lord, bless us this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. So our first song for this morning is uh, What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden. My sin was great, your love was greater 
quite a lot of things to mention as always there is plenty happening so next sunday we are going to be on zoom uh, if you don't get details and you want to join us then get in touch with me leave a message send a message an email whatever give me a call and i will send you the details so next week we're going to have a zoom it's going to be a family service an all-age service um, so do get to that um, it'll be interactive we'll probably go into groups at some point um, so that is next Sunday. The week after that, we've got a special ladies weekend, which they're all preparing for and getting on with. And the week after that, we are going to be joined, hopefully, by Joe and Lois Ovenden back on Zoom again. Uh, speaking of the Ovenden, we have a prayer letter. Prayer letter from Joe and Lois. Um, if you would like a copy, you want a paper copy, send me a message. I can get you a copy. Uh, other than that, find them online at BMS. Um, and you can look at those. There's also a new prayer letter from John and Sue Wilson there in Paris. Again, if you'd like a copy, let me know and I can get one to you um, or look it up online at BMS. Also, this week we have some stuff from the Gideons, um, their Good News for Everyone magazine. And they produced a special magazine called Hope, Encouragement for Today, Promises and Promises and Reassurance for Every Situation. You're not alone. So um, they've got loads of these. If you'd like any, if you'd like some to give out to people, then um, get in touch with me and I can get you as many as you want. So this week we had a roadmap from Boris. Um, with suggested timings of when things may happen. We haven't yet discussed as a leadership what we might be doing and when. Um, we've got a deacons meeting this week, so um, just hold fire. We will discuss it and we will have our own roadmap um, looking towards when we can fully reopen, um, when we have to, when we can sing, or they don't know yet, yet uh, when we don't have to social distance and all the rest of it. So uh, we will let you know. In the meantime, keep praying. Uh, pray for us as leaders that God would give us wisdom. We would know the right thing to do in the right time to do it. Pray for our church fellowship. Pray for each other and pray for our community. Pray for those we live and work next to, um, that we would still be uh, an outreach, that we would be telling and showing people the good news of Jesus Christ. So we are now going to have another song. It is called The Goodness of God. Of the goodness 
song leads us nicely into what we're thinking about this morning. Uh, Laura says, all my life you've been so good to me. And we're thinking about the goodness of God this morning. It's not really, uh, although the, we might be thinking it's about worry and anxiety and casting our cares on God, actually we can do all that because of the goodness of God. So let's pray before we get started on this section. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is eternal and eternally relevant. Lord, as we come today to a subject which perhaps we all struggle with, help us to remember that it's not about us, it's about you, Lord. We can give everything to you because of your goodness, because of your love and because of your care. Lord, you have demonstrated your love for us by sending your son to die on the cross for us. Lord, and by a simple act of faith, by simply putting our trust in you, we can be forgiven. We can enjoy all the benefits of being your family. We can know that we are forgiven and we are free. So Lord, as we study together this morning, open our eyes to see you more clearly, open our hearts that you might be at work through your Holy Spirit and open our ears that we might truly hear what it is you have to say to each one of us today. In Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. So if you've got a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> and we're looking at this morning verses 25 to 34. But our first question is this, what keeps you awake at night? Maybe you can't get to sleep, maybe you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, what about this? Well, for me, nothing usually keeps me awake in the night. I uh, very rarely have any trouble sleeping, head down on the pillow, shut my eyes, fast asleep. But do you wake in the night, worrying about things, thinking about things, anxious about things? Maybe it's money. Where are we going to get the money to pay the bills for this month? Where are we going to get the money to buy things that we need? Maybe you wake up worrying about your family. Uh, what about so-and-so? Uh, they're in trouble. What can I do to help? What if they do this? Maybe you worry about your work and all the things that you've forgotten to do or the things you must remember to do the next day, people you've forgotten to call, all sorts of things. Or perhaps you worry about what you're going to wear. I can honestly say I don't often worry about what I am going to wear. Maybe you worry about coronavirus, about the effects it has on our world, the effects it has on your family. Worried about catching it, worried about passing it on to vulnerable people. Maybe you're worried about the vaccine. Will I get it? Will I not? Will, it have, uh, will I get any side effects? Maybe you worry about the big picture, the effects on our world. Global warming. Maybe you worry simply about things you don't even know about. Just a general nagging worry for you, your family, your loved ones, your friends, that something bad is going to happen. Now the passage we're looking at this morning quite naturally follows on from the verses that have gone before. You could say it's probably really one big chunk. The previous verses we looked at last time have been all about uh, money and serving two masters. You can't serve money and stuff and still serve God effectively. The dangers of loving money more than God. And it talked about in that passage, the previous passage in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 24, that where is your treasure? Where are the most important things to you? The dearest things to you? What is it? And it reminded us that our ultimate treasure needs to be in heaven. 
And then Jesus, it's almost one, one continuous thought because he said, therefore, in the beginning of the passage we're about to read, therefore, in the light of that information, Jesus goes on to tell us we don't need to worry about anything. Now, I'm sure when we say things like that, when we read things like that, we say, oh, it's all very well for you, Jesus. You are the son of God. It's all very well you telling us not to worry. You're in control of everything. But Jesus is telling us and talking to us about this. Worry is just as destructive to our spiritual life as greed is. He's talking to the disciples and saying, you don't need to worry about the basic needs of your life. For worrying simply stems from not enough faith. Rather, we as God's disciples should recognise that our Heavenly Father is not only willing, but able to provide for all that we need. Indeed, he goes on further than that to say, if we invest ourselves in the work of God, of God in the world, then we won't need to worry about the future. Because we'll know and depend upon God providing for us. I guess you can sum up these 10 verses very simply. Don't worry, God has got it all under control. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and let God take care of everything else. The trouble is, is it's very easy to say those words, isn't it? It's very easy to say those things, but then you think, well, what about that bill I've got to pay? What if the car goes wrong? What about my friend who's in trouble? What about my family member? What about the person who is lost or lonely or bereaved? So let's read together Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. <clears throat> Therefore, this is Jesus speaking again, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. As we've said, the message of these verses is very simple and straightforward. Our problem with these verses is not in the understanding of it, but in the putting it into practice. It's easy enough to say, Cast all your cares upon God. It's easy enough to say, don't worry. But it's not easy for us to do. Jesus' message here in these verses finishes with the famous direction, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, if you remember back weeks and weeks ago now, uh, the key verse in the sermon is about righteousness. Jesus declares, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And he is saying that part of righteousness, part of being obedient to God, is not worrying. It's to let God take care of the things that he's promised to take care of. Reminds me of that. Uh, a mug or a saying that I said to my wife I'd get these jobs done she doesn't need to keep reminding me every six months sometimes we can be the same with God can't we we, remind, we want to remind him of all the things he's promised us and yet not wait for him to fulfil his promises 
What is worry? Well, worry is thoughts or emotions of a negative nature where attempts are made to avoid anticipated threats. As an emotion, it is experienced as anxiety or concern about real or imagined issues, often personal issues such as health or finances, or broader ones such as environmental pollution and social or technological change. That is the, I think, the dictionary definition of worry. And Jesus says to us all, as he carries on from the previous thought, he says, do not value possessions enough to worry about them. We worry about our house, we worry about our car, we worry about uh, all these sort of things. There are many who teach that if you become a Christian, you will have everything you could ever possibly desire. But actually, I think many of us are on the other side of doubting God's power to provide. In this passage, Jesus emphasises God's power, but he also stresses that God isn't going to provide everything that I ever wanted. But he does provide to promise all I need. If God can sustain life and protect and birds and clothes and just look at the flowers, he provided far more than we could ever need. If God provides for the birds and the flowers and things that are just here and gone, he will also provide for us. God promises to provide the things that we need. And it's that, I guess, a theme of the passage. The theme of the passage isn't really about worrying. The theme of the passage is about trusting. Do not worry because you can trust that God cares for you and loves you. Twice in this passage, he uses, Jesus uses the phrase, how much more? If God cares for the birds and the flowers and the grass, how much more does he care for us, our, his beloved children? Jesus draws us a little lesson from the birds and the flowers. We believe that God who cares for animals who have no job will care more for his children. People in Jesus' day considered that their cloaks were an essential item. And in fact, the law, the Old Testament law, took this for granted. Jesus declares that God can provide for us adequately, even if we lack clothing. In verse 25, he then goes on to assure us that God will supply clothes for our bodies and points us to the splendour and beauty of creation. We live in a wonderful part of the world. We live in a part of the world where creation is all around us. You only have to walk uh, two minutes, probably most of us, from our own houses to find uh, animals in the fields and beautiful fl flowers and plants, trees, mountains to look at. If God, who did all that with its intricate beauty, he can do that for a flower that flowers for a few days. It's lovely now, the snowdrops are coming out, the daffodils are coming out in my garden and the crocuses or tulips, I'm not quite sure as they are, some other flowery things in my garden, but they look amazing. I love it when the springtime comes and the things start to come out. If God can do all that for things that last for a few hours or a few days, how much more will he care for you? Jesus is the example of Solomon. Solomon's splendour, his uh, gold and his wealth and his wisdom was legendary. But Jesus says it's minuscule compared to the splendour of God's creation. In the end, how much stuff we've got doesn't matter. But God will supply what we genuinely need. Jesus again reminds his disciples that even the Gentiles seek after material things. The pagans, those who do not know God, they, they fulfil their own needs. They have food and clothing. What Jesus is here reminding us is that God's children should seek God's agenda. Assured for, that God will care for them in the process. Even in Jesus' prayer, which we just considered a few weeks ago, the Lord's Prayer. We are to seek God's kingdom first. Faith isn't just obeying a list of rules or doing certain rituals or going to certain places at certain times that we would get what we would want from God, that we would get what we need for ourselves. 
Faith is obeying God's will with the assurance that he will look after us and give us what is best for us. And that kind of faith grows only in the context of an intimate relationship of love between a heavenly father and his children where we are obedient and walk in his ways and he provides for us all the things that we need and more than that usually far more than we need some people today associate faith with being able to obtain things from god if i've got faith in god he will bless me with all these material things with money houses cars all the rest of it but jesus didn't even say that we should seek our basic needs from god he said those who are not in the church, those who are unbelievers, seek after those things. Jesus actually says, seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. It is when we care for others in need among us that God supplies the needs of his people. As we go out and seek to live a life that pleases God, to seek to be about the work of his kingdom and his righteousness, God says, I will bless you, I will look after you, I will make sure you have all the things that you need. Perhaps it's because when we are doing that, he can trust us to use his gifts in the right way to the blessing of others rather than just ourselves. In our plans for our lives, and each day we decide what to do with our lives and our resources, we have opportunities to prove to God our love for him or our lack of it. You see, one of the biggest problems with worry or anxiety is it does no good. No problems are solved, it does not get you anywhere, it is not helpful. And Jesus highlights this. Anxiety will not add even the smallest unit of time to your life if you worry about your life, how long you've got. It doesn't make any difference. You're not going to live longer because you've worried about it. We cannot extend our life by worrying. In fact, one of the uh, Jewish Leaders said this, worry and a troubled heart actually shorten life. If you are constantly worrying, you bring health problems upon yourself. And you actually shorten your life rather than lengthening it, rather than doing anything positive, it's actually a negative. Now here in this passage, Jesus never condemns people for knowing our basic needs. We need food, we need clothing, we need money to buy stuff. God knows all these things. We don't have to tell him, he already knows. Yet Jesus here calls us to depend upon God daily for all that we need. When we trust God, our Heavenly Father, to care for them, we don't need to be anxious concerning clothes or food or anything else. Jesus makes his point in these graphic word pictures and he notes that one has enough to worry about for the day without adding tomorrow's worries to it. Jesus warns the people listening and he warns us to let tomorrow worry about itself. That doesn't mean we don't need to plan or we don't need to think about it, but it means we don't need to be anxious. We let God take care of it. Jesus does not mean that concerns or, or things like that will never press upon us. It means that in all our concerns, in all our hard situations, we should express dependence upon God in each of them. Saying, God, I'm concerned about this. This is on my mind. Will you take care of it? We need to pray for our needs. As we are asking in verse 11 in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, back in verse 11 of chapter 6. But we also need to pray for God's kingdom most of all. That should be our primary focus. God's kingdom, his work and his righteousness. The part of the future that we must concern ourselves with is this. What has he revealed for us? What has he called to us to do for his kingdom and his glory? That's what we need to concern ourselves with. And God pretty much says, everything else will fall into place. If you put me first, if you put my kingdom first, if you put service of me First, then I'll take care of everything else. I will look after you. You see, there are problems with worrying, problems with anxiety. In fact, depression, anxiety, worry is probably 
an epidemic in our world today. It's one of the things that people struggle with most, anxiety about the future. Anxiety about the problems of life, the problems in their own lives, the problems of the world. But the trouble with worry, the problem with anxiety is that it accomplishes absolutely nothing. I'm sure all of us could say we don't have time to waste. Worrying is a waste of time. Worrying won't help you solve a problem or bring about a solution. So why do we waste our time and our energy on it? As it says in verses 27 to 29, can we add a single moment to our life by worrying? Why do we worry about what we wear? So worrying accomplishes nothing. Worrying is not good for you. It is destructive in many ways. It becomes like a burden that we carry about with us. And it can even make us physically sick. Proverbs 12 verse 25 says this, Worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. Maybe you've been in a situation where you've been worrying about something, a simple conversation, a simple encouragement from a friend. has caused you to look at the situation in a whole new way and you feel physically better. Worrying is not good for us. Anxiety is not good for us. Worrying is the opposite of trusting God. When we worry, when we take those burdens upon ourselves, we're saying, God, you can't handle this. I don't trust you to deal with this the way I think it should be done. The energy that we spend worrying could be put to much better use in prayer. Somebody once said this, worry replaced by prayer equals trust. If we start to worry about something, if it gets on our minds, if we wake up in the middle of the night, what should we do? Pray about it and trust God. When we pray about it, it is in effect like taking it to God and leaving it with him. When we find things preying on our minds, situations or people or anxieties about the world we take them to God in prayer and we leave them with him and we trust that he is going to fulfill his promises again verse 30 if God this is from the New Living Translation if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow he will certainly care for you why do you have so little faith and Philippians 4 Verses 6 and 7, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Worrying is the opposite of trusting God. And finally, worrying puts our focus in the wrong direction. When we keep our eyes focused on God, when we remember his love for us, we realise we've got nothing to worry about. When we're fixed upon him, God says, I'll take care of everything else. God has a wonderful plan for our lives, and part of that plan involves taking care of us. Even in the difficult times, even when it seems that God doesn't care, we can put our trust in him and focus on doing what he's asked us to do. Focus on the things of his kingdom. And God will take care of our every need. If we are worrying, we are focusing on the things around us. We're focusing on uh, human problems and human issues where God says, focus on me and the work of my kingdom. Again, Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 says this. Don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? And verses 31 to 33. Again, the New Living Translation. Don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. And that verse we already read from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. I'm sure we all worry 
about certain things. I'm sure we're all anxious occasionally about certain things. Perhaps we are fed up with the situation we find ourselves in. Maybe we worry about our friends and our families. But God says, worry is pointless. It accomplishes nothing. It is not good for us. It is the opposite of trusting God and it puts our focus in the wrong direction. Jesus says to us this in verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. When you find yourself worrying about something, when you wake up in the middle of the night anxious about something, what should we do? Because it happens to all of us. Well, what, what should we do is we should take it to God in prayer and leave it with him. We take it to God and say, God, here, I'm worried about this. I'm concerned about this person. I'm concerned about this situation. We take it to him in prayer and we say, God, I know that you've promised that you will take care of it. I know you've promised you will take care of us as your children. Here, Lord, take my worries, take my cares, take my anxieties. I lay them at your feet and allow him to deal with them. Our focus needs to be on God and his kingdom. Our focus needs to be on the work that he's called each one of us to do. And God has promised everything else will fall into place. He will look after everything else. Now, it might not be the way we want it to be. It might uh, not be pleasant sometimes. We find all of us find ourselves in difficulty sometimes. But God says, focus on me. Focus on the work of my kingdom, what I've called you to do, and I'll take care of the rest. So this week, if you find yourself worrying, next week if you find yourself worrying, if you find yourself wondering about what is going to be in the future, when we're going to come out of lockdown, when we're going to be able to meet back together in church, if these things prey on your mind, if you become anxious about anything, take it to God in prayer. Leave it with him. And he has promised he will look after you. He has promised to give you his peace that will guard our hearts and minds. Amen. Our final song for this morning is, and we can say this when we put our trust in God, it is well with my soul.
Let's pray as we finish together this morning. Don't forget to join us over on Zoom at 11.30 um, for a brew and a biscuit. Unfortunately, you have to bring your own at the moment, um, but do feel free to join us. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your love and care for us. We thank you that even as we look at the world around us, as we marvel at its beauty, you say, Lord, you tell us that you take care of us better than that. Lord, and if you look after the birds, if you look after the flowers, Lord, how much more do you love us and look after us? Father God, help us to not be those who are anxious, those who worry about things, but Lord, put our trust in you. You have called us to be about the work of your kingdom. You have called us to uh, love you above everything else. Lord, when we do that, you've promised you'll take away the anxiety from our heart, the worry from our shoulders. Lord, help us to leave those things at your feet. Help us to trust in your promise, Lord, that you will deal with those things. You will provide for our every need. Lord, help us not just to think about these things, just to, or to think that's a nice message to hear from God's word, Lord, but to put it into practice each and every day. To come to you saying, God, I'm worried about this. Lord, help us to leave it at your feet. Lord, be with those especially who are struggling. Be with those who are sick. Lord, be with those who are lonely. Lord, help us to be salt and light in our world and our communities as we seek to honour you, to worship you and to walk in your ways. Lord, may we be people who are known as those who represent you well, as those who are about the work of your kingdom, showing your care, your love, your compassion to each and every one. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We trust you are remaining safe and staying well and hope to see you soon back in the church in person and uh, more details will be forthcoming as we know uh, what's going on. So thank you for joining with us again. God bless. Bye for now.